Internet, and welcome to my annual favorite books of the year video. I'm getting this one in just under the wire, but better late than never, right? There's usually no rhyme or reason to this list that I make every year. Pretty much my only criteria is that it's a book that came out in the year. So that is why the book I'm going to kick this list off with, The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman, one of my favorite books that I read this year, but it came out in 2013. Absolutely loved this sort of adult, dark kind of fairy tale. Highly recommend it to anybody. I really need to reread this one again. So this should have been on last year's list, so this year it's my honorable mention. Coming in at number 10, one of my favorite memoirs that I read this year was As You Wish, The Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride by Carrie Ellis, who played Wesley in the movie. For anyone who loves behind the scenes sort of extras on DVDs and you love this movie, you need to read this book. It's a fantastic look at what went into making this movie, how it almost was considered a flop, but now it's considered a classic over 25 years later. Coming in at number nine is Elizabeth Yulberg's latest, Better Off Friends. This is a great story about Levi and McClellan, two kids who are growing up in Wisconsin, their best friends, and of course, no one believes that they're ever just friends because they're a guy and a girl. I really like that this book takes place over the course of several years, so you really get to see how they both grow and change. This was adorable. Coming in at number eight, someone who's never afraid of hitting the hard stuff, it's Lori Hulse Anderson's The Impossible Knife of Memory. This is a great look at a family really struggling to find themselves and each other. This is about a girl who her father has PTSD. They've been running from his demons by moving around the country but now they're finally settling into home and she doesn't really know what that means and they both still have a lot to deal with and they both find their way. This is gritty and raw and honest and I really did enjoy this book. Another book that I don't own a copy but I think I'm going to have to rectify that soon is Poisoned Apples poems for you, my pretty. This is a great collection of feminist fairy tale kind of poetry. It was raw, it was honest, it's actually very short. I think there's only 30 poems in the collection, but each one packs a punch and the incredible black and white photographs that go along with each poem, stunning. It really, really makes you think. And I'm not usually much of a poetry person. Another book that I really liked this year that's all about girls kicking butt is Mortal Heart, the final book in Robin Lefevre's His Fair Assassin trilogy. This was a great cap to the trilogy as a whole, but also I really liked that we finally got to know Aneth's story. Each of the books in the series follows a different sister at this convent, and Aneth has been someone I've been interested in since book one. She is unlike the other two protagonists that we've seen so far, and I just really admired her strength, her questioning, and her trying to figure out who she is and what it is she wants out of this life. If you like fantasy, if you like historicals, you've got to pick up this series. I actually read the whole series last year. It was amazing and this was a great finisher. Another book that was a third book in a series this year was Blue Lily Lily Blue by Maggie Stiefvater, the third book in her Raven cycle. This one we explore much more about Blue's home life and about what it is that makes Blue different from the other people in her family and different from her beloved Raven boys. The quest for Glendower continues and now that the school year's back in session, there's these added pressures of what the real world expects of her when the fantastical world is also starting to demand a lot. Blue Lily Lily Blue absolutely keeps pushing big questions, making me think, making me wonder. It's an incredible writing style and I can't wait to find out how this series ends next year. It's going to break my heart, I know it, but I kind of can't wait until it happens. Another book that I haven't been able to say enough great things about since I first read it was Grace's Guide, The Art of Pretending How to Be a Grown-Up by Grace Helbig. This is a fantastic book in that it really does give some genuinely great life advice for fellow millennials about growing up and being an adult in this internet saturated age. It's hard and it doesn't make sense and it's confusing and what are we supposed to do about it? And Grace offers some really great insights and she sprinkles in a bunch of anecdotes of her own about her own challenges and struggles with growing up. I never made a video about this one. I might still get around to it, but this is just great. I want to give this book to all of my friends. I loved every second of it. A short story collection that absolutely knocked my socks off this year was My True Love Gave to Me, 12 Holiday Stories, edited by Stephanie Perkins. This is all young adult stories. This book got me such in the spirit for the holiday season, and even if you're not a holiday kind of person, I think you can draw something from these things. Some of these authors I've read their books, some of them I've never have, but now I'm really anxious to. My number two book of 2014 was 
Cress by Marissa Meyer, the third book in her Lunar Chronicles series. This series just keeps getting better and better with each installment. This time she added in the story of Cress, who was inspired by Rapunzel, and instead of living in a tower, she was trapped in a satellite until Cinder and Scarlet come along and everything goes crazy. You still have the Lunars, you still have the struggles going on down on Earth, there's the plague, there's this lost princess, there's so much wonderful things going on in this series. I can't recommend it highly enough, and I was lucky enough to tell Marissa that when I met her this past year. So, ah, love this series. So good! And finally, my number one favorite book of 2014 was Leigh Bardugo's Ruin and Rising, the final book in her Grisha trilogy. This book was amazing on its own. It does so many things right. As a series, it capped off everything. Every question was answered. Every small moment from the first two books suddenly became epically important in this one. It was, this is one of the most well-crafted series I think I've read since Harry Potter. This, I think, might be my favorite fantasy series since Harry Potter. It's incredible and wonderful and I need to reread this and I can't believe it's over and she just does so many things so right and thankfully we don't have to give up the Grishaverse just yet. Leigh Bardugo announced that her next series will be continuing in this world and Six of Crows, the first book in that series, will be due out in 2015. So excited! So those are my top 10 slash 11 books for 2014. This was an incredible reading year. I really enjoyed all of these books. I hope you guys do too. And that leaves me now to decide what is my 2015 reading resolution going to be. These are all great books, but I think my resolution is going to be to read more widely, both in terms of genre and in terms of topic. Eight of the books that I mentioned in this video were written by white women. The other two books were written by white men. Seven of these books were novels, one was poetry, one was a self-help book, and one was a memoir. So in that respect I was good, but I just really want to expand what I'm reading and why and pushing my limits. If anything positive came out of 2014 in the book world, it was the We Need Diverse Book campaign, and I really want to take that more seriously. So maybe in next year's video I might not only be talking about books that come out in 2015, but just my favorite books that I've read in the year. Who knows? We'll see. I hope you all have a very happy new year. I hope that 2015 treats you very well. I'll see you then. Until next time, all my usual links are down below. Comments are always welcome. That's it for me for now. Take care. Bye.